ladies and gentlemen, welcome to another episode of Junkyard Digs. I'm Kevin. And I'm Mook. And today we have a 69 C10. It's been sitting for a number of years, and so we're going to get home, get running, and try to flip to make some money. How's it going, Mook? Not great. Not great? Why not? Actually, it's going great. It is. There's mud everywhere. Oh. <laughs> Today you join us in the bottom half of Iowa in the shed in the middle of nowhere because we saw this posted on Marketplace. Obviously being a late 60s Chevy, this caught my eye. And looking at it further, it looks to be in pretty good shape. She's got good straight bumpers on her. Tailgate looks nice. A little bit of Bondo down here in the quarter panel. A touch of rust. A little hole in the floor. Uh, got an automatic transmission. The doors are old. All good, everything shuts fine, glass is all here. Grill and bumper look nice. I think she's gonna clean up pretty well. Looks like we're missing a water pump, a radiator, uh, and the pulleys, so that's gonna be fun. Don't worry, you got a fan. We do have a fan. All right, so we have no keys, all the tires are flat. Uh, we got other things we gotta do today, so for right now, we're just gonna hook up, pull this thing out of here, get on the trailer, get it home, get it washed up, but they are getting that hooked up. Let's check out the other stuff sitting in here. We've got another C10, pretty much identical. It's pretty cool. But this, I like. 73, don't quote me. 383 and then a wrench with a, a name in it, I'm not sure. Not a bad looking car though. But we might have to figure out who owns this and talk to him. Oh my God. <laughs> Look at that tiny string. Stinky. It stinks in there. <laughs> They're still out there folks. You just gotta find We got it. All right, that's that. Let's tow this sucker home, clean her up, get in the shop, and get it running again. Let's go home, Mook. Give her a bath. Yeah. Could do a bath too. No. Yeah. the shop hey. <laughs> <laughs> well I suppose with that we're back with the uh, 69 C10 it's been a couple weeks we've been doing some other stuff in the meantime long story short we're back with the truck we've got a big pile of parts back here uh, we've got a fuel tank from AMD we've got a fuel level sender and radiator supports from CJ Pony Parts and then of course all of our brake components and water pump and whatnot I bought from Rock Auto. We also have a radiator from probably eBay. I don't remember where I got it. Since the last time this truck was on camera we took the running boards off so that we could get it up on the Ben Pack 10,000 pound two post lift and besides that we have different tires on the truck. <laughs> These are in the shed. They're not quite the right size, but they will do for now so that we can roll this thing around and drive this thing around. Where should we start, Moop? Engine bay. 
I suppose this is in the engine bay. Yeah, I just, I don't want to fold the hood, you know? Mm. This is yeah. always a good thing to do right away is get in there and oil up them hood hinges. Oh, that's a lot better. These ones aren't as bad as the square bodies. The square bodies actually fold so easy because they were the first truck to incorporate a crumple zone in the hood, which is why they just go. Ah! Oh, point it point down. It down. <laughs> there we go. Don't worry guys, that's just an operator error. <laughs> in here we have either a 230, 250, or 292 inline six. I'm assuming it's the 250 or the 230. Oh, it do spin. This truck's like pretty solid, except for the cowl. Like, I don't know what's going on here. <laughs> it's just gone. But then like the firewall's perfect. Weird. Take the newt newt off. Newt newt. If I know anything about anything, that's a little GM one jet or whatever the hell they call them. There's, there's a name right here. Monojet. Oh. GM's little one barrel carburetors are seemingly immortal and they always run. I think it's, yeah. yeah these, <laughs> all right, step one, new cable. Kevin, you woke up a moth. Hi, little guy. What's your name? I got the Chompy 3000s. That's my favorite tool. <laughs> we made it. And if I'm really careful, I can use the Choppy 3000s to strip our new wire. Ta -da. I don't know what this guy runs. He goes to a positive like bus bar thing and then... That might actually be the factory PowerPoint. Interesting. I have not worked on any 60 Chevys before. Did you know that move? Nope. Hell, I honestly haven't worked on that many Chevys. <laughs> Choppy 3000s also work good for installing stuff. Here's my key. Ready? Mm -hmm. Nice. All right, I'm gonna show you guys my three-step process for success to make an engine run. Anyone can make stuff run. It's really easy. Making stuff dependable and drivable, that's where skills and smarts come in. So, we've already got this to spin, whether that be from the key or from jumping the starter, just like I did. Our next step is to supply the coil with 12 volts to the positive side or make sure it is supplied from the key if you're lucky enough to have one. So I'm going to plug this in right here. On the positive side, you can see this one's marked negative and it goes to the distributor. This one will go to a power source. And I'm going to take this one and hook it to the positive side of the battery. Now we have an engine that spins and a coil that has power if the points work and there was fuel in this, it would run right now. That's it, that's all it is, it's so simple. With that being said, let's check to see if we have spark. I highly doubt we will. I am 98% sure we'll have to sand the points, but I've been wrong before. Let me guess, nothing? I didn't see anything. Okay, let's get a screwdriver and pop that cap off, sand the points, and we'll have spark. And these inline sixes are easy to work on. There's so much space for activities. There it is. This would be an awesome truck to have as a first classic vehicle, just because it's so easy to work on. Okay, our cap is off. Got a little bug nest in there, get rid of him. While I'm in here, I'm going to make sure that all of these six or eight or four, depending on how many cylinders you have, all these little metal points are clean. I like to take a screwdriver and just scrape some of the shit off of them. They can still be pretty dirty. And Oh, no. Hey, you're supposed to hold on to that. They can be pretty dirty and still run. I just, you know, just take a couple seconds. You're already in here. Clean those off. Make sure that carbon piece in the middle is good, too. If he's not sticking out a bit, he might be an issue later on or immediately. Take our rotor, find something good to clean him on. Bam, restored. No need to buy one of those. Next up, our points. This arm right here has a carbon tip on the end, and this side does as well. This completes a circuit on the negative side for your ignition. When that is connected, the coil receives a negative and a positive uh, lead. And then as this rotates in correspondence with the motor, that opens. And when those open, it interrupts the ground to the coil. And the energy built up in the coil discharges out of our coil wire. 
But right now, as you can see, all the white crusty crap on those is all corrosion and they are essentially staying open all the time because they're not conducting electricity throughout. So all I need to do is get a little piece of sandpaper, clean them up and we'll have spark. I'm going to spoil a bit of the magic. In all reality, this right here is all you need to make a car at least sputter or run for a couple seconds. If it's new enough to not have points, you can pretty much just hit it with gas <laughs> and it'll do. Some people like to use points files. I don't. I've tried them. They don't seem to actually file any of the material or they don't contour well enough to get the full surface. They just get one part. But all you gotta do is come in here and make sure these are off once again. Open your points up. Stick that piece of sandpaper in between them and wait 30 minutes. No, I'm kidding. Go to town, sand them up a little bit. Once you got this done, the most important part, take a corner of your shirt, get it in between those points, and then pull it through. And that'll pull all the dust and sandpaper particulate off of them and allow them to connect. If you want to test them, put power back to your points. Make sure you got a nice insulated screwdriver. Reach in there and open them up. See that? Sparks. That means our points are working. In fact, I can go one step further and test the coil even by holding this near a grounded point and opening those up again. Ready? Mm -hmm. See the spark? Mm -hmm. That means our coil's good and our points are good. Get him back on. Put this guy back on. Tighten him back down. Reconnect the coil wire, and assuming this is still timed right, assuming it was running when it was parked, and assuming that there's nothing mechanically wrong inside, which it didn't sound like it from spinning over, I'm gonna throw some brake clean down that, and this thing will fire off. It's that easy. Let's see. Ready? There you go. First start in a number of years. It's just that easy. Transmission works. <laughs> I forgot he was unplugged. Sweet. We know we got a good motor. Sounded really healthy. So let's uh, start reassembling it. You got any like working tunes you can sing, Luke? Make the time go by faster. Do you know the alphabet? I can teach you that. <laughs> it's a lot of goop, Kevin. Yeah. We're gonna get her cleaned up, Luke. Tell you what. Heck. Give, give me a heck. Heck. Mm -hmm. Luke, fun fact, did you know that super scrapers are made in Iowa? Mm -mm. And they have a lifetime warranty, I believe. If they get dull, you send them in and he'll sharpen them for you. What's so super about them, Kevin? Are you kidding me? Look at this. <laughs> They're amazing. What are they made out of, though? A stick. Good job! And a, and a, <laughs> and a carbide vent, which is the important part. I should have started with that. Before we get hardware, some bugs have made some nests in these holes. I'm going to blow a little brake clean in there to get some crap out. And then take a thread chaser, which is just like a normal bolt, but with little cuts in the side, kind of like a tap. And then run him in and clean up those threads. Ooh, that could be a problem. Our alternator is broken. <laughs> oh my gosh. Man, we had one of these motors with all these extra parts we needed and we got rid of it. It was from your Nova. Oops. <laughs> Alright, get this done, find some hardware, and bolt on our water pump. Alright, I found some hardware. Two of them even match, can you believe that? We've got our water pump gasket, and just like all of our gaskets, we're going to take the appropriate RTV. I've got gray here, this is high torque. And I'm going to put RTV on both sides of the gasket. The reason I'm doing this is to fill in any imperfections in the metal, any pitting it might have, and really make sure this seals so I don't have to do it twice. All right, once it's on, take two fingers, kind of smooth it all out, make sure it's all evenly coated. Get this guy on here. This also helps locate it, so I can just kind of tack him in place. It's going back together. Wow. It's all shiny. I'll get all four bolts in there finger tight, and I'm going to let that sit for eh, 30 minutes. Let that RTV bond, and then we'll torque them down. See you then. Goodbye. <laughs> Nothing like them $135 Chinese radiators from eBay, huh, Mook? That's a mouthful.
Honestly, I've had those in like four cars now and had no issues whatsoever. Okay, before you put that in, you're missing one of the mounts. I just saw that too. <laughs> I bought new ones. <laughs> okay. One, one sec. You hold that. I'll be back. Okay. All these. Thank you, CJ Pony Parts, for selling these to me. What you got? A, a radiator. Uh, Let's go. <laughs> it moves. <laughs> New mounts are in. New radiator going on top. Right there. All right, there. Now for the upper mounts. Yeah. All right, our radiator is in and we have our trans lines hooked up. I don't have any radiator hoses for cooling yet. We gotta go pick those up from O'Reilly's, but the trans is hooked up so it won't make a giant mess. With that being said, our five gallon boat tank is full of gas and plumbed to the old mechanical fuel pump. So all I have to do is hook this up right here, reach in, Hit the starter with the screwdriver, cross the contacts, and hopefully this thing will pump some fuel and come to life. Come on, pump some juice up there. Oh, come on. Stubborn old girl, ain't she? <laughs> You should have fuel by now. That was weird. Ah, oh, we lost spark. Heck. Heck. Points out again. Clean them up. That's pretty common. It's like, it happens a lot. They run a little bit, get a little more electricity, a little more moving around. Another piece of dust gets in there. Just, you often have to do it two or three times. All right, so as you can see, closing, opening, and nothing's happening. <laughs> that would be some more crap in there. Chances are I don't need to sand this, but rather just get more dust out of it, so. All right, let's try that again. There we go, spark is back. Try it again, Mook. Let's unhook our fuel feed up here to verify whether or not our pump is working. Still kind of feeling like that's a no right now. That pump is junk. That might have been why it got parked. Well, O'Reilly's? O'Reilly's. Let's do it. Alrighty, O'Reilly's came through once again. We got our pump installed. We got our radiator filled full of water. The alternator's off. That doesn't really matter for right now. What we're just trying to do is see if this sucker will pull some fuel and see if that carb runs. For the first time ever on the channel, I'm going to use one of these because it's a Chevy and I can't reach it and I don't have a second person here. Let's see what she does. <laughs> Hose jumping. That means that she is pumping fuel. One of these has to be an accelerator pump, right? Well, maybe this carburetor is so small it doesn't have one. I just don't see anything on there that would act as one. Huh. Manual accelerator pump it is. makes no change that's weird sweet we got ourselves a running motor what I don't know is if we have ourselves a working transmission that didn't seem very promising to say the least Come here. I'll put some trans fluid in it because it's probably leaked out after sitting for I don't remember how many years at this point a lot uh, it's, it's probably pretty low so let's fill it up first and then try it again all right I threw two quarts of trans fluid in let's see what happens
Okay, sweet. It was just low on fluid. All right, so there we go. The easy stuff is done. This thing runs, the transmission works, the wheel spins. Like I said earlier, making this run, not a big deal. Air, fuel, spark, away she goes. Anyone can do that. The hard part is making this run good and reliably and being safe on the road. With that being said, it's time to dive into our next thing, which is going to be brakes. I've already got it up on the lift, so I'm gonna go ahead and pop the wheels off and get started on those. Then once that's done, we'll roll it forward to where I can get to the door and put a fuel tank in it. Let's get to it. All right, it is the next day. I have been busy. I have everything on the right side of the truck done. Shocks, brake lines, brake hoses, and brakes are all done over there. It is time now to do the left side. On the rears, our pads look excellent. They even got nice new lettering on them. They're not delaminating at all. They're pretty smooth. They came off pretty nice. Our hardware looks good as well. All we're going to be changing is the wheel cylinder. As you can tell, there's a bunch of black goop and just kind of general wetness in here. And I already washed this down with brake clean once. But that presence of moisture means that there is brake fluid leaking in this area. And obviously that's going to come from the seals on the end of the wheel cylinder. So he is going to need replaced. It's also just a great thing to do for safety, especially since I'm going to be selling this truck at the end of the video. I want whoever buys this to have a truck that is safe and I don't have to worry about it. All right, first things first, channel locks. Take the front spring off, let them hang. Channel locks again, grab the rear spring, push him forward, let him hang. I should probably mention, do not start the other side of the truck until one side is completely done and confirmed functional. This is your template for how it goes back together. These Chevy brakes especially are quite complicated in the drums, way more complicated than the Fords. Also, you're gonna wanna take both drums off and look at them and make sure they match. Make sure someone before you didn't come in and screw this all up so what you think is right and you copy is actually wrong. I have done that, I verified they're correct on each side, they match. Side to side, everything functions fine. We got nice even pad wear. Did that side to completion, made sure it matched this side perfectly. And now I'm taking this side apart so I can use the finished side as my reference if I get confused where a part goes. Okay, back to taking stuff off. Compress this, push him up. And, oh, come on. There we go. With that bar out of the way, once again, just let him hang. You know, slide him over into the, the lower groove out here. Slide him over, make sure we don't lose our parking brake bar. Pop this guy out of my way. And then pull these two pins out. Yeah, see how wet those were? That was definitely a leaky wheel cylinder. Now since I'm replacing the line, I don't care about trying to get the old one off. Uh, it was already rusted in junk, so I just snapped them off. Now I'm going to take a 3 8 wrench on the back side and undo two bolts that hold the wheel cylinder on. Hmm, that one's a circle now. I just had to say it would be easy, didn't I? Okay, we'll be back in a half hour when I get these bolts off. All right, as you can tell, I got them. Drilled them out from the back side, smacked this with a hammer, away she went, it was pretty easy. Cleaned up these, got our new brake line plumbed up. All I gotta do now is take some good old anti-sneeze. Get a little bit right there. A little bit right there, put a little here, a little bit over here. Basically any contact points that are exposed right now. And a touch here, because why not? Get some on these guys and send these guys back in their home. Yep, now I look like the gold tin man. Now that those are in, we're gonna take our emergency brake bar, line him and this pin up at the same time as I put the shoe into place. There we go. Same on the front. Come on. Work with me. Okay. Put this guy back in place before I forget. Now in reverse order of disassembly. The bar goes on. There we go. Now our spring goes on. I got a channel lock so I can stay far away from it. There we go. And last but not least, our forward spring. It's a little bent up, so. Uh, with that, our new wheel cylinder is in and the top of our brakes are done. I say top because there is one more thing I'm going to do while I'm in here. I'm gonna grab 
the bottom of these brakes, spread them apart, and pop our self adjuster out. Now, as you can tell, he is stuck, so I'm going to take him over to the bench grinder, break it loose, and clean it up, fill it with anti seize, and then reinstall it, and then this is done. Ta da! She's all cleaned up, full of anti seize. I marked how long it was over there on the bench so that I set it to the same length as it was before, which means it should, in theory, still be with an adjustment. It's best to stick it behind and then spread these apart. So there we go, she's all done. With that, I can put our drone back on and then take it right back off because I forgot to knock one of these holes out so that I can adjust it easily. But either way, this corner's done. I'll replace that shock and the whole ass end of the truck is good to go. All right, our rears are done, which means it's now time for the front. Step one, get our grease cap off. Step two, realize that that's disgusting and we're probably gonna have to replace everything in there. Tucked in all the grease, we're gonna have a cotter pin. I'm gonna open him up and then we will give him a tap. Pull him clean through, those were quite loose. Next up is our castle nut and behind him lies a washer. And of course behind that washer is our outer wheel bearing. Give the whole thing a shake. It should kick on out. You'll be able to reach in there and grab it. That actually doesn't look bad. You can see it's been sitting for long enough that the oil, uh, the grease has separated and there's like oil in here where everything else was super thick and it's even puddled to the bottom which is interesting. We could definitely clean that bearing up and reuse it, but I have new ones, so I'm gonna put them in. They're like eight bucks on Rock Auto. Next up is our drum, which all of these have been a little finicky on this truck. You wanna pry between the dust cover and the drum itself, but not catch the brake pads that are back in there and pull those out as well, or else everything will get all cockeyed and bind up. Best spot is right up here in the top where your wheel cylinder is, as well as right in the center where your star wheel is. There we go. On these late 60s, early 70s Chevy's trucks, the brakes front and rear match. They have a two inch. This is the two inch pad and I think a two and a half. Either way, this C10 is running the two inch brake pads and drums. Beyond that, the hardware and shoes on all four corners is the same. So that makes it really nice. Do note, if you buy adjuster kits from Rock Auto, I found out that an adjuster kit, instead of being a whole axle, is just one wheel on this setup. So if you buy them, you'll have to buy four adjuster kits. In our case, thankfully, all this hardware looks totally fine, just dusty. Just like the rear, upper rear spring comes off first. Don't forget safety glasses, by the way. Get that rod off once again, and then the forward upper spring. As you saw there, I used my spindle as a leverage point. You can do that off the spindle or off of a lug nut to get a little extra oomph with the channel locks on those springs. It works really good. Next up, I'm going to grab these springs on the side. These are the locator springs that hold the whole shoe to the backing plate. You'll have one here and, of course, one here. All you have to do is push in and then, if it would behave, Use your finger on the back side to turn the pin, but this one is fighting me. Spring. Oh, another thing I didn't mention on the rear is keep all of your hardware until you know everything works. Keep it all. And once it all works, you can throw it away. Or if you're like me, take the good little bits and pieces and throw them in a box because you'll probably have a broken one somewhere on some truck you don't care enough to put new parts on, and you're going to need that one spring. Once those are off, go ahead and grab your shoes and take the whole assembly off the truck, just like that. I didn't have to mess with any of these adjusters or springs or any of this crap. I will have to mess with it, but for now, I'm gonna carefully lay this on the ground so that I have this as a diagram to follow when I take it all off and put it on the new shoes. Wheel cylinder pins, gonna need those. And last but not least, our wheel cylinder. Now, these on these Chevys are pretty different, to say the least. Another word for that is annoying and dumb, but I think different works pretty well. Try not to breathe brake dust as much as you can. Sometimes those are asbestos pads and you just put it in the air. So I like to do that and then walk away for a bit. Now to get our wheel cylinder off on these, we need to get a punch 
and bend this metal tab back straight so that this giant nut can come out. This is a retention system right here that doesn't let that back out. Once that guy's out of your way, pick your favorite one and one eighth inch wrench. And pop that sucker loose. Uh, now usually I would loosen the hose on the back of the wheel cylinder first so that this isn't moving all over the place, but we're replacing the whole hose. I'm literally just gonna cut out on the way so the order didn't really matter. Done. Now that that's all off, take a wire brush, get the heavy shit out of there. Make sure you got your safety mask on once again. Once you're done with the rough pass, take whatever rag you've been using, throw it on the floor, take your brake clean, leave the straw in it, by the way, it lasts 10 times longer if you leave the straw in it. I usually run out of liquid before I run out of air this way. And just give her a quick little rinse down. The point of the dirty used rag, by the way, is for all this to drip on instead of getting on your floor. Next step, most important one for the reason that we take this all the way down to the backing plate is that we get our drill, little wire wheel, and we clean these six contact points. Get nice and shiny. This is on all drum brakes. Once again, quick rinse with some brake clean. And just like that, we are ready for reassembly. At this point, I'll take a moment to replace this uh, brake hose right here, and I'll be right back. New rubber hose is on. We've got a new retaining clip. If you break one of these and you need one, they sell them down at O'Reilly's. I don't remember if they're behind the counter or out on the shelf. I want to say they're out on the shelf. It's one of those Dorman help products. Go pick up five, six of them, keep them in your toolbox. It'll save you a trip later on. If you haven't heard me talk about this before in the past and you're not sure why I'm replacing this rubber hose, what happens to these is they swell internally. So if you've ever had a car where you try to move it and as you pump the brakes suddenly one of the tires locks up and the tire stops spinning but you let it sit for a day and suddenly the tire starts spinning again, you're like, what the hell is that about? Hit the brakes, tire locks up for another day. What's happening is the inside of this hose is swollen shut. When you put your foot on the brake pedal, it's putting, you know, a thousand PSI. I don't know if I can show that. <laughs> it's putting a lot of pressure through the hose and it's able to come down into the brake caliper or wheel cylinder and expand the brakes. The only thing pushing that fluid back up into the reservoir is the pressure of the springs in the brakes or the pads on the calipers wanting to naturally return. And if this is swollen, that doesn't have enough power to force back up the hose, so it just acts as a one-way valve. So that is why we replace rubber lines. Oh, they could explode and kill you when they get old. I guess there's also that one. They're not very expensive. They're not that much of a pain in the ass, especially if you live down south, you lucky bastards. That being said, let's get our new wheel cylinder installed here. And of course, I'm going to bend this tab down to make sure that it doesn't come loose. Oh yeah, you got to do this end first. We need to put some anti-seize on these six points that we cleaned up earlier because once again that is where the shoes will ride against on the backing plate and we want them to be nice and slippery. Keep that nearby, we're gonna need it. I'm gonna go spend some quality time with our old friend the wire wheel and I'll be back in a bit. All right, just got back from the wire wheel, look how these cleaned up, <laughs> just kidding. Take your nails for the shoes and shove them in through the backing plate. Grab your spring. Sometimes you'll have a washer, sometimes you won't. Either way, generally you will have a spring and a cap. And then if you do have a washer or one of these round doodads like this, this one's actually a pin to hold some other stuff, but we'll get to that. It simply goes at the opposite end of the spring 
than the cap against the shoe. So we're going to take our shoe, put him in place, see the nail coming through there, put the washer on since that is such a large hole, suddenly I realize why that's there, and then take our spring and our cap, and if you're lucky or have really strong hands, you can compress this on by hand, otherwise I'll probably have to grab my pliers. Oh, you finicky bastard. Oh, I got it though. Sweet. Now before we hang the rear shoe, we need to get this guy in place. This is the self-adjuster on these Chevy brakes. This is actually three pieces, four pieces together right now. One is this little pin that the nail will go through and allow this to pivot. Two is obviously the large arm. Three is this spring right here. And four is this bracket on the back. Now he will have an L as well as this will have an L on it to show you it is the left side of the truck. This bracket, I don't know how to describe it best, but it goes on like that. <laughs> The one tab is going to go through here and hold him in place, and the spring is going to grab this one. What this does is acts as a cantilever for the whole system. And before we put him on, I'm going to try to spread those open and get some, oops, well, it's all over the place. <laughs> get some anti-seize between those two components right there so that they can move a little better. That's a lot better, less squeaky. Alongside that, put some anti-seize on this pin that will allow him to rotate and it's going to make it really easy for it to be installed because now it won't fall out because it's essentially glued in place. Put our shoe in place, get our whole lever assembly McGee thing 3000 in place. And once those are on, get this little spring and put him right here on this tab. Now grab your two push rods, little anti-seize on both ends there and pop those guys into the wheel cylinder. Line them up with that groove right there on the front and the rear. And then grab your shoes and pull them up onto the backing plate face where they're supposed to sit. Once all that's done, it's time to start putting springs on. Start with the longest one here. Put him in this lower hole right here. Rotate him up to where he'll go on like that. There's tools for this shit. I've had these for years, I've never used them once. I honestly don't even know how. Honestly, I think those confuse people and that scares them. I know that confuses me trying to figure out what those are for. All I do is take a nice fat screwdriver, get this guy lined up, get this guy in here, keep my hand out of the way, somewhere it'll be safe. Bam. All right, next up is this rod. He's gonna go right here in that last remaining spot on the tiny bracket attached to the big one that is our self-adjuster. You can push the big one down and it'll give you a little more rod length and then pull the whole shoe closer and it'll go right on. Might have to fight it a little more than I did right there if your springs are newer. Last one for the top, I'm going to go in the same opposite hole that this one's in and it's going to go right here to that rod. Now this one, a screwdriver doesn't work the best so I get the old permanent pliers out, grab hold, and stretch them up into place. Ah, oh, son of a... All right, start over. Thankfully, with the magic of TV, I was able to just poof that right into place. We're gonna take some anti-seize, believe it or not, put some on the threads, put some on the little cap on the end, and of course, both halves. Actually, before we put that self-adjuster on, we have to put our last spring on. He is going to go with the barrel side over here by the adjuster. We're gonna hook him back here, where no one can see, including myself. Once you got him hooked on the back, once you have him hooked back there, stretch him forward to this hole, and he'll be in place. This is gonna make life a lot easier to do that first. Now to get this in, you're gonna go behind the front shoe, up into place, onto the back shoe, and then spread them apart, give them a little twist, and boom. Just like that, our brakes are assembled, and then it's good to go, all we have to do now is get that drum on, repack some new wheel bearings, change the wheel seal, and then adjust these, and we're good to go. There's probably 10 billion videos of all of that and 9 billion of what I just did on YouTube, but uh, hopefully there was one or two tips in there that someone will pick up and it'll make their lives easier. With that being said, I'm gonna finish this shit up so I can go to bed and we'll see you tomorrow morning for a master cylinder, a tank, a key, Ooh, and all the water pump pulleys and alternator brackets. I still don't have those. Right, we'll see you tomorrow. All right, come on, play well. Ooh, I got lucky on that one.
Okay, another tip for you guys, getting these off without twisting the lines off. Take a wire brush and try to get the bristles down between that hose and that nut as much as you can to get all that opened up so that step two, some PB Blaster, can get in there and try to free that hose from the nut. At this point, go ahead and grab your wrench and give it a go. If you can get it to spin, awesome. If you can't, probably time to move to uh, step three, which is apply some heat to this. Try to get it free, hit it with the PB Blaster, rinse and repeat. But while you're doing all that, what you want to do with the wrench is this. A little bit of back and forth action, and it'll eventually, maybe, if you're lucky, break loose from the hose. There we go. Wiggling it like that is a bit of a cheat that I've learned that helps you break that free instead of just torquing it all the way one direction and rounding that hose right off. All right, so I ran down to a buddy here locally. Um, thank you, Todd, for giving me this water pump pulley. I believe this is off a small block Chevy, but I also believe it doesn't matter. Let's find out. I'm right, it works perfect. Get this sucker bolted up and we'll be one step closer to working water pump. All right, so I've spent a little bit of time with the welder and fixed our bottom bracket, after which I spent some time with the drill press and the cutoff wheel and made an upper bracket. And now I'm tightening it all together. And for the first time in who knows how long, our accessories are hooked up. Then I can spin the whole motor over. Hell yeah! Before it was idling a little rough, you may remember. So I've hooked up the timing light, I cleaned off our timing tab, and the marker on the harmonic at zero. So I'm gonna fire this up, get some temp in it, and then adjust our timing. I also have the distributor loosened. Probably shooting for about 10, 12 degrees initial. negative right now. Oh, I also have the back of the dance unhooked. That's important. Aim for 10. Oh, that sounds way better. Sounds fantastic. Now, make sure I don't have too much total timing in it. I need to check that to make sure I didn't raise my initial too high. Thirty-three degrees total timing, ten initial. I'm gonna call that good. That is a very healthy sounding motor. All right, now we can do our tank and all the other stuff. I just need a little bit of motivation to keep going. Good morning, everyone. This isn't the relaxing weekend I was promised. <laughs> As you can see, we just took the seat out and Angus is here. With that being said, it's tank time. Your favorite. Like pocket tanks or? How are you, Angus? I am good, Dad. What did you get yourself into with this thing? I um, mean, it's some crap, apparently. It's good, but it's rusty in all the spots that you'd expect. Yeah, she needs a little bit of work, but we're almost there. Yeah, she'll good. be a good driver for someone. Oh, hey, by the way, you just reminded me of something the other day. It's the two year anniversary of us getting your F100. Oh! That's right! Check that video series out up here, that's an awesome one. We, was, Angus bought awesome. a 65 F100 for 500 bucks. It was like 13 degrees outside. We got it running, pulled it up a hill with the trailer winch because it was stuck in the snow, yeah. did some work on it, and it is still driving regularly to this day. Hell, you drove it last weekend. Yeah. All yeah. the snowmills around. It's my most reliable vehicle. <laughs> <laughs> and that includes my new Silverado. It's, it's the best sounding, too. That 292 awesome. Y-Block is Beautiful. In fact, here's a little snippet. You can follow us on TikTok, by the way, Junkyard Digs.
just righteous. What video is that? <laughs> Sounds like I'm going like maybe 30. Yeah, you are. Oh, look at those shorts. <laughs> <laughs> Check that video series out if you haven't seen it. It's it's an awesome truck and it's a really good house to on just basic getting the trucks back on the road. Blah blah blah. Is it bad that this is heavy? <laughs> That's how much rust is in it. Oh <laughs> I'm like sure that'd be fine. Ten pounds of shit in the bottom. Alright, let's vacuum out our cab and get the new one in. Took a little time, cleaned the whole interior out. Hit her with some D-germs, some glass cleaner. I think it was a smoker's truck because there was tar all over the windows. Ironically, it does not stink in here at all. Get this bolted down and hooked up. And put a key in it and go for a ride. Good old AMD fuel tank goes right in place. I bought the fuel tank myself from AMD and then I bought the uh, sending unit from CJ Pony Parts. Funny that neither supplier had all the parts. <laughs> Everything up here should be good to go. Topped off on coolant, brake fluid. I don't have an air cleaner on it right now because the air cleaner was completely packed full of like mouse hair. Besides that, I think we're good to go up here. Get this fuel in, get ourselves in, get the race car out of the way, get my big Johnson out of the way, and go for a cruise. Your big Johnson. I've got to tell everybody about it. I'll move the race car. Can you move my big Johnson? I really don't want to touch it. Just Johnson. hop on it. I don't listen. Well, I don't know that we're that close. <laughs> well, at least I'm not having to touch your Johnson. If you guys don't recognize this car, check out last week's video. We bought a Pinto that had been sitting for a bit and took it straight to a 24 hours of lemons race. If you did see that video, uh, I discovered what the pop noise was that Ike was talking about. The control arm had come loose and the sway bar broke off. So I've got some stuff to fix. I'm sure that'll do great in the snow. All right, you ready for this, Angus? Uh, as ready as I'm gonna be. I've got our key here. Power. A starter. <laughs> oh, the freaking positive battery cable fell out. If your terminals are too big for your wire, or your wire is too small for your terminals like this, here's what you can do. Take this guy, flip him upside down, and then put everything back together. I'll give you a lot more squeeze on that wire. used to love you now that you've got places to go yeah now that we're late for something they won't do a damn thing Turn the idle up a little bit and rig up a better switch to start this. Okay, idle's turned up. Angus rigged this guy up. That's last words. There we go. Oh, we're not even on fire yet. Not yet. doing it we're not doing it anymore it's for safety do 
food. <laughs> it loves you. Mm, lost power. Will we ever get this video done? Tune in next week to find out. Oh my god. I hate cherries. Let's try again. All we're trying to do is drive around the block. Oh, we're outside of the shop. We're doing it, dude. We're it's doing done it. it. It's a driver. The speedometer works. The tires work. The steering works. The engine kind of works. The carbon needs work. Do the brakes work? The brakes do. The brakes do work. They do be doing. Don't. Yeah, that just neutral. There's no accelerator pump. Like, I don't even think there is one, which I don't quite understand. But look at this. Look at this. Oh, second gear. Oh, second gear. Oh, second gear. <laughs> we are doing it. <laughs> Kickdown works. Kickdown works. And it's even still running. How's the brakes? Uh, they're <laughs> great in the rear. <laughs> I think we were fighting a bunch of air in the lines last night and we could not get it out of the front. So I still gotta work on that. We're doing it though. The Chevy is back on the road for the first time in 12 years. And there's snow coming through the floor. I don't see how. It needs a carburetor, bad. <laughs> Yeah, we're not going to be driving far, that's for sure. Come on, please just get out of the intersection. That's all I asked. Good girl. Technically done. And yeah, that's all we get. <laughs> Fire! There's an old lady staring at us. Ease into the throttle. And then lay into it. This thing is heavier than I expected. I was just thinking that, but I didn't want to say it. Like, that wasn't all of it. I think there was some more there, but it kind of moves. I don't know what rear gear is in it. I would hope something pretty numerically low being a power glide. It's a two-speed automatic. <laughs> Jesus. Wow. That's a hot little six. I wasn't anticipating this. <laughs> it's exclusively one back brake. Yeah, it's just the rears. Maybe I'll just let it idle back to the shop. It idles great. But anything between idle and full throttle, it doesn't want to run. She needs a carb, she needs the front brakes bled a little more, but she's back on the road for the first time once again in 12 something years. I guess that specifically means 12, doesn't it? With that being said, what do we do with the old girl? Personally, I say sell it, like immediately. There are a few things I should probably fix before this goes to marketplace, but if anyone is interested, shoot me an email at junkyarddigs1 at gmail.com. What do you think, Angus? Start at five. Ah, this is a $10,000 truck right there. Tell you what, we'll give them half off. 
Oh. Five grand. She has some rust and she has some problems, but the body is very straight. The chrome all around the truck is flawless. There's one dent and a piece on the tailgate. Besides that, this thing has great bones and could be one hell of a truck for someone who wants to put a little more time into it than I do. With that being said, we'll see you guys next week for another episode. Where are we going, Angus? Heck, I ain't know. I think, I think you do know. Oh, I know. <laughs> We're going snowmobiling. Well, so I've been told. $500 vintage snowmobile challenge. We'll see you guys then. Peace.